Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast and this is our Transfer Hub concept, your home of Aston Villa's breaking news, transfer news, rumours, new signings, anything news related uh, for Aston Villa, this is the home for it. So, Aston Villa are linked again with Pedro Goncalves from Sporting Lisbon. We were linked with him in January and I'm so pleased that this Rumour has cropped up again, so we'll get into uh, the bones of this rumour and, and the stats on, on how we had a second half of the season because I think it's interesting to talk about Goncalves because in January, we've evolved since January as a team and we've learned so much more about this Aston Villa side and what we need and etc. So let's have a look at the rumour in a second, but before we start... A little bit of self-promotion uh, for my second channel. So if you can all go ahead and subscribe to my second channel, the growth has been amazing so far. So if you can subscribe, it'll help me out massively. Uh, but yeah, the growth is mental. Uh, this is in the second channel then. So I'll put the link of this in the description. Do subscribe. Uh, we've got loads of different content. We've got transfer hubs for players in and around Europe. We've got watch-alongs. We've got news we've got everything on this channel but what we are going to be doing is covering the ashes on this channel so if you are a cricket fan and you want to be talking about the ashes you want to be having content on the ashes we're going to be doing watch alongs for the opening session uh we'll do little bits and bobs because i know cricket is a is a long long game so you know we'll maybe do the first hour of session so uh, we're going to have that on this channel we're going to have the women's game as well. So the Women's World Cup, we're going to be covering that. We're going to be covering anything sport related over the summer. So go ahead and uh, go and check it out. I did do a video on why Leeds United should stay well clear of Stephen Gerrard. And that has now got over 5,000 views. So yeah, the channel's growing. I'm enjoying creating the content, something a little bit different. So if you can go ahead and uh, support that channel as well. You know, it'll, it'll mean the world uh, to me, to be fair, uh, for all the hard work that we're putting in. So let's have a look then at the rumour. So it's coming out of a news outlet that Aston Villa have inquired about uh, Pedro Goncalves. It's made the front page of this newspaper as well. So uh, that's decent. And then it's got uh, Jokeres from Coventry going the opposite direction. So... Uh, the rumours there, the links there, it's exciting. Uh, if we have a look in general transfer hub fashion, uh, how we ended the season. So we had a 7.51 rating, absolutely massive. Uh, his player value is 33 million. He's got a release clause. His strengths are his penalty taking, his positioning, his anchor play. But I think his, his awareness is great. And the other thing about him, his decision making is really, really good. It reminds me, if I had to compare him to another player, of Bruno Gamares. He reminds me of him. So I think to be linked and, and to have a characteristic the same as him, you know, he's, he's a credit to Gamares because Gamares is absolutely fantastic. But I think Goncalves offers Goyle uh, a dribbling ability. He offers, you know, he can break through the lines well. He loves to break through the lines and get on the end of crosses. He's in and around the 18-yard box. He loves a little cheeky no-look pass as well. He's a penalty taker. It's just all round Uzi's quality and Uzi's class. And I think if we could bring him in, it would be a fantastic, fantastic signing. So this season, he played 33 games, started 33, scored 15 goals for midfield. Uh, he had 1.3 shots per game. Uh, he also had goal conversion of 14%. He had 11 assists, 88% uh, accuracy in his own half. Opposition half, 71% passing accuracy. He had 1.8 tackles per game, 43% successful dribbles per game. If we have a look at uh, his duels, 47% of his duels. So he's just below half for his duels, 36% aerial duels. Uh, so he's a, he's a big time player and I think he's going to be He's going to be going to a big, big club, and hopefully that big club is Aston Villa. But what I would like to mention, because we did the Kieran Tierney episode, and I know it was mixed. There was yes, there was no's. But the fundamental thing that we was getting as well was, why do we want three left-backs? 
Now, I've spoke about the Ashley Young thing as well um, and the sentiment thing. And, and, and some people, I think, might have took the sentiment thing the wrong way. My general point is this, is that Unai Emery's coming to Aston Villa and he has done remarkably well with the players that we have got, the core players that we have got. He has improved them tenfold and that's what Unai Emery does. We might get linked to a player where he's been elsewhere, fantastic, gone elsewhere, not been so great. Everybody's a mixed bag. I'm not sure on this one because of this. But Unai Emery gets them back to their peak, peak levels. And I think that's what Unai Emery has done with a lot of the players at Aston Villa. Here's the thing. Unai Emery is an elite coach and he's got an elite mentality of he doesn't want to qualify for the Europa Conference. That's not his level. Unai Emery wants to get Aston Villa next phase, Champions League, that's his aim, Champions League, if not Europa League. So my, my general point is, is that we can look at certain players that currently play for Aston Villa and think, you know what, they're going to be here next season. Like you could run through the whole team and think, you know what, they're going to be here. I can't see this player being on the bench. I can't see that player being on the bench. I just don't see how this player could not play for Villa. But the bottom line is that's going to happen. There's going to be players in this current side that Unai Emery wants to improve and move on. And my, my whole sentiment thing is, 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 I have to use an example. So we use Matty Cash, right? Everybody would look at Matty Cash and think, you know what? I write Cash. I like him. I, I write his personality. I write, I write the vibe he has at Villa. I think he's a good right back. But that doesn't mean that we can't improve and move that player on. And that's my point, and that's what I think is going to happen. And I think there's going to be a couple of areas in this side where we do look to improve. So, you know, I'll use the right-back area as an example, that we've got rid of Ashley Young, and, and everybody was heartbroken, and everybody was like, you know, a lot of people were saying it was the it was the bad decision. But, yeah, I, I, I love Ashley Young and I think he was fantastic for two seasons. But there's more to it than just what we're seeing with our eyes. Like maybe the data guys have got all of his data and all of his stats and all of his analytics and thinking, you know what? He can't have another season like that. His body just won't do it. So things like that, going to a player, leaving a club and moving on. And, and I get what he can bring to the dressing room, but... Don't get me wrong now, we've had some we've had some big players come to Villa with these mentalities. We've had John Terry, we've had Ashley Young, we've had Philip Coutinho. But what's happening is when those players come into the dressing room, they have an impact on players like Tyro Mings. Now Tyro Mings is getting into the pinnacle of his career, he's getting into sort of like the latter end of his career when he reaches like 30, 31, 32. But he can become the Ashley Young of what we need in this side because he's learnt from all of these players. So I think just because someone like Ashley Young's left doesn't mean that that influence in that dressing room disappears because a lot of the established players at Villa will have learnt so much from Ashley Young, John Terry, you know, players like that. So I think I think that's my general point is that some players... Unai Emery is going to look to improve in this team. And I think when we get linked with players, that's what we have to look at as well, basically. So, yeah, back to God, back to God, Calvis, because I've just gone off on one. But that's my general vibe. And hopefully you can understand my thinking of when, you know, a new player gets linked with Aston Villa, like maybe a Tierney. Maybe it does mean that Luca Dean may be moved on. So I think we have to think about those type of things that, you know, the characteristics of what a player can bring as opposed to the one that's going to be leaving. You look at Luca Dean. Luca Dean's currently our highest earner at Aston Villa. So Luca Dean's our current highest earner at Aston Villa, but he's second choice left back. So I know we'd look to Tierney to bring Tierney in, but you're moving away a player that currently is on an absolute wedge that is second choice. So those type of decisions are going to have to be made 
to help improve the balance of the squad as well. And we're going into a campaign where we need a lot of bodies. We need a lot of players. You know, how many of you were fuming that we had two keepers on the bench? Like towards the back end of the season, that bench was looking pretty, pretty light. So we need to create, we need to create a squad again who are going to impact and improve the team. And if, say, Jacob Ramsey sits out a game because he's played in Europe and then we've got a Premier League game, Gon Calves comes straight in, vice versa. The quality is there, whereas it, I look at the squad in areas at the minute, is if, if Jacob Ramsey's at this team, who plays in that wide left position? Like, I, have no, I have no idea who you can put there at the minute. So we need quality to come in that can balance the squad, that when one player's gone, another one drops straight in there. So back to Gon Calvis, right? So he is a fantastic, fantastic player. And there's going to be a lot of clubs that are linked with Gon Calvis. So if we just have a little comp comparison, because you can see from this heat map that he plays on that left-hand side. Now, this is an area that I think Villa are going to look to strengthen because this area is so integral to the way we play because when Moreno bombs on and goes forward, we need this <clears throat> savvy player that plays in this Ramsey role to, to be strong, to have guile, to have a, a tactical awareness. So I think this is where I could see him playing. So if we compare him to sort of like a Jacob Ramsey... Ramsey has got a 60 attacking rating. Goncalves has got a 74. So you can see that Goncalves is the blue and Ramsey is in... Uh, Goncalves is the green and Ramsey is in the blue. So uh, there's a little bit of a difference in the stats here. Uh, if we have a look at the transfer market value, it's looking at around 30 million. His highest value was around 38 million. And interestingly, I think his agent is George Mendes. Um, so he's working along the same sort of lines as this relationship, which we know that we're starting to get with George Mendes, but we yet to really see it coming to fruition uh, because we've been linked with Asensio, who is a Mendes uh, client, but we, we just haven't we haven't seen that one come into fruition either. So uh, he did play for Wolves, didn't he? Which is really really interesting. And he is a part of the whole setup for Portugal, under 17s, 18s, 20s, 21s, and currently got two at caps for uh, Portugal. This is really interesting as well. If we have a look at his uh, per uh, per 90, so he's averaging three shots per 90, shot creating actions 4.55. Uh, progressive passes 5.26, touches in the, uh, I think that means the opposition area, 4.43, uh, progressive passes 4.47, 1.89 tackles. The player is an absolute baller and I see him being an absolute revelation in that area next to the double pivot. I think it would be, it, it would be epic there. Absolutely epic. So, I'm a big fan of Goncalves. Uh, he was fantastic against Arsenal uh, in the Europa League as well. He was absolutely majestic in that game. So he's a quality quality player. And it's again, it's brilliant that this one has resurfaced. So it's one that was linked with in January, resurfaced in the summer. Hopefully we can get this one done because it would be absolutely amazing. So Villa fans, let me know your thoughts are on Pedro. Uh, I'm absolutely loving creating the transfer hub so far. Uh, we have got new concepts that are going to be coming, uh, but I'm sort of waiting for the transfer window to open. I think it's on June 14th. So we'll keep it with the old sort of vibe and then we'll start churning out something new when the transfer window opens as well. So be sure to go and check out my second channel. Show some support and love. Go and subscribe to it. Up the villa.